We didn't make it. In last week's episode, Noah and Matt were up at the crack of dawn with the goal to make it to Quebec. But the following days would be the toughest yet. Navigating the beaver creeks at the height of land. It's just so thick. They were forced to spend two uncomfortable nights sleeping in the bog. But the hard work paid off as they eventually made it to the beautiful Romaine watershed. Welcome to the land of wild rivers. Very, very calm morning. If it holds up like this, it's gonna be great traveling down this lake today. There's this odd time in the morning before it gets too warm that there are no bugs. And it's a very beautiful time to be alive. That's been like the one part of my body that hasn't been sort of recovering daily is my shoulders. So I'm trying to do lots of stretching to keep them in good paddling shape. I think it's just a weak rotator cuff thing. First fish of the trip. Felt little head shakes coming in like really quickly. Like it's not a rocket. Had it really far out there. Oh, it's off. Oh no. We'll just assume it was a tiny little snot rocket that we wouldn't have kept anyway. Yeah, not like a little juicy brook trout. No, or a big old laker. We have left Lac Brule and we're entering Lac Levois. And we're looking down about 4K to the other side and there's a 100% some human infrastructure down there. And we know that the Romaine Dam is another 80 kilometers or so down river. So this might be part of that complex. We're gonna go check it out because uh, that's where we gotta go. This beach looked like a dam. It's not a dam at all. It's a outpost or fishing lodge or someone's homestead. We're just gonna see if anyone's home. Looks like a bear got in here before us. Yeah. We'll keep hunting and fishing. Yeah. The on the van is not bad. Yeah. Front door not locked. Let's go check out the front door. Jesus. The stove is all ripped out. The gas lines for the stove probably came in through the wall and the bear hauled the stove out and pulled the wall in. It doesn't look like it's been abandoned. Totally 
this camp got absolutely destroyed by a bear. And it looks like in pretty good shape, other than the fact that it got absolutely destroyed by a bear. Looks to be a fishing and hunting camp. They were here from June 25th to July 6th, 2019 was the last trip. And their last thing was final thoughts. Although we couldn't use our water tower and the four-wheeler broke down on the last day, camp looks fantastic and fishing was epic. All right, that was, uh, that was pretty crazy to see. Uh, it looks like we found a logbook and it looks like a lot of the owners, it looks like it's a shared camp and a lot of the owners are from the United States. The last log is 2019 and that's kind of where COVID started. So it sounds like, well, it seems like that they haven't been able to come up to Canada because of COVID restrictions. And in that time, a bear came in and ripped it all apart. So I did find some uh, contact information in there. When we get back home, I'll give them a shout to let them know, hey, your camp has been mauled by a bear and uh, some repairs are gonna have to be done. A lot of this stuff is superficial, a lot of just garbage around, but there are some walls that are being ripped out and some other fundamental issues with like the freezer and the deep freeze and uh, a couple other things that would need to be uh, replaced. But overall, that's, uh, that's, that, that sucks to see. Bears are, are scavengers and they will do whatever they can to get into a place where they think food is. And perfect example, this place has not been seen for two years, a bear gets in. Tough luck for these guys. You saw a trout rise in there? Yeah, I did. Not a big one, but like I did see a fish rise up just before that rapid. Ooh, nice little one to get our uh, get our white water boots back on. Yeah. Holy smokers! <laughs> I'm gonna run out of line here. Now, I mean, my rod's not the heaviest duty thing around, but still. What pound test do you have? I don't know. I want a bulldog in some yeah that's what I'm trying to be good. I don't really know how strong this line is it's just some shit that's laying around that I threw on why'd you go do that well it was like it just it was on the rod from trout fishing this spring what is I think it might is that a white fish oh it's a pike just a big pike. It is a big pike. He snapped me off. I don't know if I should be using this line. I don't think so. I think I'm going to have to change it up. I'll put on that Power Pro that I got in the repair kit. Oh, that's frustrating. That could be like eight pound monofilament. Yeah. You want to go to shore? I make a move. He's, he's gonna. Out. Yeah, he's gonna go. Jesus. That is a big ass pike. Do you want pliers? It's a big bike. Look at that, buddy. Did he take that again? Is that? Oh, I thought he hooked himself on the way out.
you packs a punch, man. Woo! There's some spice. <laughs> yep. I like it. Whoa! It like it tingles in your mouth for a yeah, while. It's smacks in the head. It's because you packed three ramens into a small pot. <laughs> into a small pot, yeah. Well, that's I was debating like it, like leaving out one of the spice packs, but like, nah. No, man. Spice is one thing that we don't get often out here. It's a weird spice though. Like it's, it doesn't burn. It like tingles in your mouth. It's Oriental spice. This site isn't too bad. It's not terrible. We've had worse. I'll take it over a bog. Let's put it that way. We are kind of on an angle there. It's okay. As soon as I set it up though, and saw the inside just dry, it just like gave me a sense of security. <laughs> yeah, it's nice, eh? Yeah. It is true, like, <clears throat> the tent is a constant out here. Everything changes around you, but inside the tent is constant. By the time I finish this, that'll have burned down to coals again. And then I can just start doing pancakes. I could also just do the cornbread now and it wouldn't take me long to do pancakes in the morning. Probably take no longer than boiling water for oatmeal. If you have the energy in the fire now, it might just save you. Yeah, that's true. The time tomorrow morning. But you're calm, man. You're the chef. Oh, that was some spicy ramen. That was. We have finished Lac Brulee and a couple lakes below it, which means we've completed the down river lake paddling for a while. And tomorrow we start on the Senecal River. The Senecal River is about 80 kilometers long and we'll be going up it. It's a bunch of lakes strung together by a river. And this is the portion of the trip where we had the least amount of information on. It's the mystery portion. And we're very excited to see what these rapids look like that we'll be going up. We might be portaging, we might be tracking, we might be dragging the boats, uh, who knows? But we'll find out tomorrow. Can you get nudes on an inReach? Maybe you can and I just don't know about it. All right, ready for some cornbread action? That looks like icing mix. Yeah, Matt. we're gonna do the, <laughs> do the cake icing method. That's not a big enough hole. I'm gonna burst out the sides. <laughs> it's a learning process. Now it's coming. I'm sure it'll be pretty. Like a smaller river system. Yeah. Which will be kind of nice. After having done the bog, definitely not as nervous about it. I was quite nervous about that 80k upriver. I was like, oh, f we're only going to do like 5k a day and we're going to be, you know, slogging and not making any progress. But I'm trying to figure out on the trip because I'd never done a trip this long. Like, what would it take to break me mentally? And I feel like if the bog didn't break me mentally, the Seneca River won't break me mentally. And that's what I was nervous about. Like, all, all anxiety that I had about this trip was not about, like, so much, like, our safety. I mean, obviously, like, that's something to be worried about. But, like, it wasn't what I was anxious about. My, my anxiousness was about, like, whether or not I could handle mentally yeah. And like how much it would suck. A little crispy. Caramelized. <laughs> Little Nutella fix that right up. <laughs> oh man, would you mind grabbing me like a Ziploc bag or something for these when yeah. they're done? This entire trip is like a bag of mixed nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little bit of everything. You got big lake travel, bog crossings, down river travel, you got up river travel, and you got some wild white water. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And that's what the Mace of the Aguaniche is all about. Whew. Just as the sun goes down. sleep really well that was probably one of the best sleeps I've had I, was, I only woke up like once other than that I was just out our route was designed to descend the Aguaniche River and the only way to get there is to go up the Senecal to cross the height of land into the Aguaniche watershed 
The Senecal is a tributary of the Romaine and drains the surrounding wetlands to the east. This section is one of the crux of the trip. We don't know if the river will have too much or not enough water to make the 80 kilometers to the Agumish. Matt and I have been anxiously awaiting the Senecal for the entire trip. So we know these rivers are going to be steep, and worst case, we can portage and bushwhack along the shoreline. But ideally, we can track and drag our canoes upriver. It's about picking apart a rapid, same as you would going down the rapids, but we are going up. See that deep water channel, Matt? There's a nice little nook right to the far left we can hit, eh? Yeah. Uh, once you're secure, why don't you go right up to the top? The rapids were getting too gnarly, so we had to get to shore and uh, we're going to portage the rest of this. <sighs> Take your time, Noah. Take your time. Why am I so close to the river? Can't. Oh my god. This is so fing thick. She's open a bit. Glad we found each other. Yeah, I had no idea where you were. I was just stumbling. I went way too close to the river. Same. 
We never learn. The river has the thickest bush on the perimeter. Yeah. If we follow the big trees, that has the least disturbance and it's like the most open. We just like have to go around rather than like crash through all the thick brush there. Yeah. There's lots of holes and shit in there. Like a couple of those holes are three, four feet deep. Yeah. Super dangerous. At one point, I think like every strap on this barrel must have been like hooked on a branch and I was stuck and like, come on, just let me through pulling at stuff. <laughs> What do you want to do? Second load to here and then finish it off? Yeah, I'm down to do that. Take a break. Yeah. Ah! Yes! Holy smokers, eh? Yeah, that was a hell of a portage. All right, guys, that was a pretty gnarly portage. But we learned a valuable lesson there. If we're portaging around these rapids, search for high ground. A lot easier than the, the thick bush and alders that, that uh, line these rapids. I'm stoked for the cornbread. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be good. I'm stoked mostly just to eat peanut butter and jam. Like, the cornbread is just the thing that I eat it on. Yeah. I'm loving that jam out here. Look around the corner here though. It's a nice channel all the way up. Yeah. It's pretty good. Eh? It's very manageable. Unless we think we could come around that island and like line up sort of the middle and then hook in. It's probably safer than trying to carry our gear to this point. Like we'll slip and twist an ankle or something on these. Yeah. How's my hair? Looking good? Flip that thing around for me. Oh yeah. The Elvis hair might come in yet. There's some gray in there. Yeah, there's gonna be a few more by the end of this. We got a portage around this one. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Everything's in one piece? Oh man, that was close. I'm good. The river choked up on us again. We crashed through the alders to get into the forest. And where we stand right here, it's pretty open. So I think the plan is to bypass these next couple sections where we see down river that there's a lot of white water and go over the peninsula about 500 meters. I'm not crying blood. That is from a black fly bite. How's the old peeper doing? So far the forest has been pretty pretty open. It's still tough work. Don't get me wrong. Let's go.
Yeah, every step is critical when you're supposed yeah. to have like 80 pounds in your, on like your back. You just want to push and get through it, but you get so tired, it's like whatever it is, 90 pounds or something. Yours is probably freaking 120. At some point, you're just going to take a wrong step and fall into one of these holes and break an ankle. Oh my God. I don't know if I've ever been so focused on not breaking an ankle. Ah, let's go. Let's go. We did it, dude. That was a very tough day. We portaged around two big sets of rapids and the bush was pretty thick and there was a lot of opportunities to really hurt ourselves in there. The terrain was uneven, we were carrying heavy weight and the thickness of those alders literally just traps you. We did a really good job of not getting injured today. The Seneca River is about 80 kilometers long and we did about 14 kilometers today. So there's still a lot more work ahead of us. day 12 there was frost last night it's pretty cold but we did check the weather on the Garmin and it's supposed to get up to 26 degrees today that's hot that's really hot and if we have to bushwhack it's gonna be hot and buggy but we'll take what we can get This thing is about seven inches long. It looks like a string. It looks like an eel or something. I have no idea what this is. If you guys know what this is, let me know in the comments below.
I don't know if I should find it reassuring, but I do find it reassuring that I can hear rapids, but they're the ones below us, and I don't hear the ones above us. It's going to be another tough day on the river, and I thought I should sing a tune for good passage. The Seneca Elf, the Seneca Elf, the mosquitoes are thick, we'll need that Benadryl. Oh man, it's going to be shivers as we track up the river to the height of land. Yeah, baby boy. Thank you, seagulls. So far, so good. We can see pretty far and it's just a subtle current that we can track pretty efficiently. Woo! Tracking is a skill set every canoe should have in a toolkit. Pretty much, you walk the boat up the river using the current to your advantage. To me, tracking is an art form, and style and grace can turn this into a dance with the river, constantly reading the current and playing on angles. The goal is to keep the boat away from the shoreline and in the deep water channel. You do this by angling the nose against the current to push the boat to the left or to the right. Your angle is based on the strength of the current, and because rivers are turbulent, you'll constantly be adjusting it. If the current is strong, you'll close the angle. If it's weak, you'll open it up. The gear we use are two 30-foot lines of 9mm floating rope, one attached to the bow and one to the stern. We found that this length is enough that you can comfortably get around obstacles, but not too long that it's a nuisance to manage. Having two lines is also important for being able to angle the boat from side to side. Tracking can be done with one or two people. We prefer having two. There's not a cloud in the sky and we're getting a bonus 10 kilometers of paddling in before we get to the next set of rapids. This has been a nice change over the last 24 hours. This is the first lake where we're seeing substantial mountains forming on the west shore. What do you think, Matt? I think that's the east shore. <laughs> <laughs> Retake. <laughs> <laughs> on the east shore over here. What do you think, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> it's fake now, I can't do it. After what the slog that yesterday was, it just feels really nice to paddle on a warm, calm lake with beautiful scenery. That's what it's all about. You gotta endure the hard times so you can appreciate the good times. We've approached the set of rapids leaving this lake. It's about a kilometer long. We are open to accept whatever comes our way, but we're both very scared that this is gonna be very difficult. There's some shimmering white water. We know we've done it yesterday, we can do it again today. After this set, there's about 20 kilometers or so of paddling. So, eye on the prize. Nothing to do but uh, go get it done. We had a good training yesterday, so.
tailed it. And then you go up. Let me know when you're secure. Yeah. We are finding a lot of moose activity on our portages when they go the same direction as us. They're actually quite helpful. So moose is essentially like a canoe traveling through the woods. So it would take the, the path of least resistance. And that's what we wanted to do. Also fun fact, this entire woods here has some of the best moss toilet paper that you'll find. Let me get a good patch for you here to show you. You want moss with long roots that are relatively all consistent and kind of moist. You want to be able to squeeze it and get a couple drips of water to come out. Let's try it out. Little drip. Oop. This is some of the best stuff because it absorbs and it's dense and it's cool. This entire forest floor is full of butt wipes. It's amazing. I wish I could go to the washroom right now to show you guys. Short portage right at the end. Maybe like 50 meters, but other than that, we tracked the entire thing. Awesome. When you expect the worst, it's not that bad. Oh, the day is getting on. It's getting close to dinner time. The sun's been beating down all day and we're on the final lake trying to get to a campsite for the evening. We see a narrows on the map that show a potential waterfall. So we're gonna try to get to there if we can. When it's really hot like this and you're working hard all day, it drains your energy and uh, we're pretty pooped. So we're looking forward to uh, getting off the lake and being thankful for the, the clear passages today on the river sections. We got to the waterfall, not much of a waterfall, more of just a set of rapids. And we're looking for somewhere to camp. And we pull over to the side of the rapids here, and we find an actual marked portage. And guys, we're, we're pretty remote. If you look at where we are on a map, it looks pretty old with a lot of fallen trees over the trail, but this is huge. Other than that camp a couple days ago, this is the only signs of human activity that we've seen out here. It seems random just to be in the middle of this lake at a set of rapids and we didn't see them at any other sets of rapids. We got a water boiling, tent set up, and we're ready for bed pretty much after we eat a hearty meal. We are at the headwaters of the Seneca River, which is Seneca Lake and there's a smaller channel that enters Senecal from the height of land, which drains all the wetlands up there. And we're taking that tomorrow to hopefully reach the Agunish River in a few days. We have about eight kilometers of lake paddle before a lot of potential lining or potentially brutal portages. I think our, if we're gonna have a problem, it's gonna be not enough water. I think there'll be enough water to drag the boats. I think that we're gonna have a pretty rough day tomorrow with those marked rapids. But then there was that big section, it, it, it looked flat, like there's no contours near the water. 
and it was just like a long channel and I'm almost thinking that that's getting into that boggy height of land still water type stuff. Like what we saw at the last tidal land, you know, we came in, there was just big still waters connected by blue lines. I'm wondering if it's going to be something like that. Because it's like with this amount of water, as long as it's not steep or wide, we're good. Yeah. And then there's this, this long river section. There's rapid there, contour crossing. Rapid there. That's yeah, gonna be shitty. Yeah. We got a lot of work ahead of us. 